Psalm 118, verse 24. You all know this verse. It goes, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And then the next verse is, save us, we beseech you, O Lord. That word right there, that, that phrase, save us, we beseech you, that's Hosanna. That's where we get the word Hosanna. You heard Ray in her call to confession point out that the whole idea of Hosanna is to ask God for deliverance. So that is a call that not only is true in our case, it's true all over the world. So we're going to sing Hosanna, this call to God to save and this praise of God all at the same time in the South African tradition with our brothers and sisters halfway around the world. The way they say it is Sana Sananina. Try that, say that. Sana Sananina. You can sing with us in just a moment. Scripture this morning is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, verses 1 to 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say, the Lord needs it and we'll send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told him what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. They built a beautiful 
home together and a garden. Purples and yellows and peonies that would make you weep if you saw them. Then one day, same-sex marriage became legal in their state, and they thought maybe, maybe. Then one day they were out on the beach, and Richard got down on one knee and asked Kevin to marry him, and he said yes. Then the cake and the suits and the invitation, and maybe the dogs could bring up the rings. But before the planning started in earnest, they would have to tell Kevin's parents. And so they invited them over for supper. Now, Kevin's parents loved his cooking, but they didn't love his lifestyle, as they called it. They said they just couldn't understand it, or really they just didn't want to understand it. And so after the meal, they went out into the garden, and they had lavender tea and lemon bars. And Kevin told them the whole story, how Richard got down on his knees, the cake and the suits, and how the dogs might bring up the rings, and everyone laughed. And everyone smiled, and his mother had tears of joy. And as they were leaving, his mother wrapped her arms around him and said, I'm so proud of you, and I'm so happy for you. And his dad stood up and shook Richard's hand and said, Two words. Congratulations, son. Don't rush this moment. This is a Palm Sunday moment. This is the world exactly the way it's supposed to be, exactly the way God intended it to be. Kevin knows that in a week, or two, his parents will call. They'll have talked to their pastor. He'll have said something about God doesn't agree with their lifestyle, something about how their relationship makes God weep, that they can't come to the wedding, not because what the pastor said, but because something came up. But don't rush this moment, right? Love as soft as lavender tea and acceptance as sweet as lemon bars. Don't rush this moment, the mother's embrace. Those two words, congratulations, son. Every Tuesday after work, she goes to the shelter. She locks up her purse, she takes off her suit jacket, she grabs the stool and she goes into the gymnasium where the clients are there. She gets down on her stool with her warm basin of water and she puts her client's foot into the water and she washes it. She soaps it up, she lets it soak and they talk about life. She washes in between their toes. Then she dries them off with a tea towel and she rubs polysporin into the wounds. She knows that in a week some of those clients will be back on the street. She knows some of them will be face down in a doorway like that man, remember, who was going from Jericho to Jerusalem and she will walk right by. But don't Rush this moment. The free talking, the warm water, the smell of the soap. Don't rush this moment. This is a Palm Sunday moment. This is the world exactly the way it's supposed to be. This is the way God wants the world to be. Don't rush this moment. When they reached Jerusalem, 
Jesus said to his disciples, go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find there a colt, a baby donkey that's never been rid before. Untie that coat and bring it to me. If anyone says, what the heck are you doing? Just say the Lord needs it and that he'll return it, and they'll give it to you. And so they went into the city, and they found the colt, just as Jesus has said, and as they were untying it, the people said, what the heck are you doing? And they said, the Lord needs it, he'll give it back, and they let it go, and they brought that baby donkey back to Jesus, and they laid their coats on it, and Jesus sat on it. Now, if your mind is prone to wandering, wandering during sermons, here you let it rip. A grown man on a baby donkey doesn't even have his legs yet. They're shaking. That donkey's still wet behind its ears, and a grown man on top of it. I wonder if his feet were dragging. I wonder if that donkey was too little to ride, and Jesus was just walking on top of it into Jerusalem. If your mind is prone to wandering, let it rip. Why does Mark's Jesus put a baby donkey between his legs and go into Jerusalem? Is it because he knows his Bible? Is it because he's a rabbi, a student of the scripture? Is it because he knows Zechariah and Isaiah? Is it because Zechariah says, look, here is your king, humble, merciful, riding not just on a donkey, but a baby donkey. Look, this is how God comes into the world. It's street theater. It's a thing that subverts every processional that has ever come into Jerusalem or into Washington, D.C., or into Indianapolis. It's Jesus on a donkey, not a war horse, amen? Not a white stallion of war, no armor, no police escorts, no escalade ahead and behind him, no limousine with flashing lights, no security, no secret service with their hands on their ears. God comes humble and merciful and straddling, maybe walking with a donkey inside his legs. Don't rush this moment. God riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. This is a Palm Sunday moment. This is a kingdom moment. Don't rush it. You know, as well as I know, that things are going to go so bad. You know that now we say, Hosanna, but we will say, crucify him. Crucify him. So don't rush this moment. There's a controversy around Palm Sunday. Maybe you know it. People don't come to church on Monday, Thursday. They don't come to church on Good Friday. They go from Palm Sunday to Easter Sunday. They go from Hosanna to He is risen indeed. They don't want to wash those feet. They don't want to put the polysporin in the sores. They don't want to sit on death row. They don't want to witness an execution. They just want to say, Hosanna, and he is risen indeed. But I say, don't rush this moment. Go over there for Monday, Thursday. Come here for Good Friday. Sit with Jesus. Witness his death. And don't rush through Palm Sunday. Because this is how God comes into the world. Humble and mounted on a donkey. This is how God comes into the world with lavender tea and lemon bars. It's so small. This is how God comes into the world with a mother's embrace. And two words and a new name. Congratulations, son. Don't rush this moment. This is how God comes into the world. Can you smell the soap? And feel the salve, the balm in Gilead. It's not amazing. It's not triumphant. It is peaceful and humble, and it is small. 
And it is enough. I know it feels like the world is a veil of tears. I know that planes crash into the side of mountains. I know that parents don't show up at weddings. I know we live in a state that is legalizing discrimination, so don't rush Palm Sunday. This is a teaching Sunday. On this Sunday, we learn how God comes into the world, humble, full of peace. God's love and peace and justice, it is trickling in. I know it doesn't look like much. I know it looks like a carpenter from Nazareth on a baby donkey, still wet behind the ears. But this is how God comes. And when you see it, you need to mark it. When you see it, you need to take out your palm and wave it high in the air and say, Hosanna. See, Hosanna in the highest. You need to tell one another about it so we can get through the valley of the shadow of death knowing all the while that God is small and unassuming and challenging and beautiful and humble and on a beast of burden. Don't rush. Just enjoy your God. Say amen. Amen.